as the title says, this video is every level of Les Paul. That is right. Behind me, I have seven Les Pauls, ranging from $150 all the way up to about $6,000. We're gonna plug them all in and try them out and see how they sound, and maybe even test out their tuning stability a little bit. So let's get into it. Level one. Ah, level one, baby. Here it is. This is, check it out, this is the Epiphone Les Paul Special. And the Epiphone Les Paul Special is your starter guitar. This is what a lot of dudes had when I was younger. I even remember the girl who sang for my first band, she actually had the Special 2, which is the next level up from this. The difference is, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but the Special 2 has a two-piece bridge, and then has the stop bar tailpiece afterwards. This one just has the all-in-one stop bar wraparound bridge, which is super simple. And the thing is about this guitar, it's exactly that. It is super simple. We have one volume, we have one tone, we have a three-way pickup selector, you have a basswood body, you have a bolt-on neck, you know, everything is pretty standard. Nickel frets, I mean, it's just, it's all bolted together, slammed together, with the intention of getting you, and it's all just to get you through your first year of guitar playing as comfortably and as nicely and friendly as possible. So yeah, look at that. I mean, it's just got a satin finish. It's nothing special. Let's plug it in and get some sounds. Let's check it out over on the Guitar Cam Cam Cam. Let's get this. As you'd expect, it's a little bit muddy. But it's got an, it does, I'm not gonna lie, it feels like a Les Paul. Something about it. I wish, I can't even do a blindfold test because I would know right away between the finish and where the pickup selector is that it's an Epiphone special. As I play through all these, I hope that you can hear how the action is based on if I struggle a little bit more on one guitar versus the other. So we'll see how that goes. Let's get some dirt on it. Let's see how it goes. Oh yeah! It's a little bumpy. The frets are a little bumpy, not gonna lie. I like the bite though. I do like the bite of that. You could be Angus Young with this a little bit, which is cool. At the end of the day, after that little bit of abuse, it stayed in tune pretty well, right? Let's 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 abuse it really good. Hold on, let's see. Let's see. I don't hate how well it stayed in tune. It's not the end of the world. It's a little bit out of tune, but that was, that was some serious abuse. And I don't think that in your first year of playing guitar, you will abuse this guitar as much as I just did. Maybe you will, I don't know. On to level two. Okay, level two. Some of you that have followed the channel for a while know what this is. And before you jump down my throat, I will explain. So check this out. This is my Gibson, Les Paul Suprome. It is the 
the Les Paul Supreme, which in short, it is my Chipson Les Paul. This is my fake Chipson thing, right? And it's supposed to be a Supreme, but it, as you see on the headstock, it looks nothing like a Supreme. It really doesn't even, to most Les Paul fans and fanatics, it probably won't even look like a Les Paul from a distance. But yeah, this is the fake Chinese knockoff from I think AliExpress or something like that, one of those. And it is quite old at this point. This is a super old version of it. I've had it for a number of years now. And the reason that this sits at number two is because there's certain things about this that are insanely high quality for the price, but there are certain things that are also kind of crappy for the price. And I do consider this kind of lower than a high-end Epiphone, but it is a guitar that could grow with you. And it's a guitar that if you're not sure what you like yet, you can buy this if you know you like Les Pauls and you kind of play and get the feeling for what a Les Paul's supposed to be and start messing with pickups and tuners. This one doesn't have the original tuners on it. It was upgraded. And these are, are these even Grovers? No, I don't know what these are, but the original holes are there. That's the only reason I know that it was upgraded. But these are the stock pickups. And as far as that goes, check this out, ready? That rhythm pickup is super beefy. It's a little too much. It's a little too dark. But I gotta tell you, the action on this thing from day one was what impressed me the most, you know? It's really not a bad guitar, but also the other reason for me putting this where I did put it is because price-wise, these were originally like $350, and now you can get them for like five or six sometimes. So it kind of sits underneath a higher-end Epiphone. And I do go between like loving this guitar and hating it. I think I hate what it stands for the most, but I also do think that this is kind of a guitar that I, as much as I hate it, I really enjoy having it in my guitar arsenal. It's fun to have in the collection. So let's, let's kick it up a notch. Honestly, this is what made me fall in love with this guitar is this, ready? Listen, I don't know if you can get away with it looking like a Les Paul if you want to. I don't know if you can get away with it pretending it's a Les Paul. Most people will know that it's not a real Les Paul from a mile away, but it's a fun guitar to have. It really is. Let's see how it stayed in tune. Let me abuse it a little bit and see if it stays in tune. Okay, ready? Ew! Dude, this one definitely failed the tuning test. Definitely failed, thumbs down all day. But you can upgrade it. And you can get it cheap enough that you can put some really high-end upgrades on it. On to level three. Level three will make you feel like Pete Townsend in the Bob O'Reilly or like Won't Get Fooled Again music videos, right? This is the Pete Townsend guitar. This is the classic wine red. Is it showing up enough on the camera? I hope so. Because like, it's just, honestly, I've never seen another company do wine red like Gibson slash Epiphone, right? It's like they have their own version of it. It's like, like old Indian motorcycles, they have their special Indian red. You know, the Yankees have their signature blue, you know? It's like, I think it's like a classic, but also a little bit undervalued look nowadays, right? Let me get this all tuned up real quick, and I'll tell you what this is. This one is the Epiphone Les Paul Traditional Pro. And the Traditional Pro is a sweet line that they did in both Gibson and Epiphone. I think this is the five or the four. I'm not sure which number they're on, but you can still get this guitar in, and right now you can get it in blue, 
You can get it in the classic kind of black. You can get it in this. And you also, they have a gold top variation on this. And besides that, you get the gold knobs and you get the, the zebra stripe pickups, which like this set is kind of like a collector's dream also, right? Everyone kind of has one set that has the zebra stripe pickups in it, which is pretty cool. You get pearl inlays on the fretboard. You get a nice binding. This has a satin finish on the back and on the neck. I don't know if that was meant to cut cost, but I personally like the feel of it and I like the look on the front of having the gloss finish. Something else that's really cool about these is that we have a coil split on both pickups. So check this out, ready? Treble position. Want to be John Fogarty for a second or something? That's a fairly convincing coil split with not too much volume drop, right? Honestly, kind of more reminiscent of a P90 in my eyes, I think, than an actual single coil, which, I mean, that's a classic Les Paul sound, right? That neck pickup is beefy. Let's see how it sounds cranked up. Let's see, let's see. Here we go, ready? Oh yeah. Not bad. It sounds really wonderful. Now sitting somewhere in like the $550 range, this guitar is the type of guitar that I would look at as something that is once again, easily upgradable, has, is packed with features, has comfort, but it's like a good looking piece to have in the studio at the same time, right? If you have, you don't always need a flashy looking studio guitar, but this looks great and also packs a punch and is easily upgradable. Also, did I mention this comes with Grover tuners, which I think is important to mention because you want that tuning stability. Now it is still a Les Paul, so probably is out of tune now as we speak. <laughs> Let's see, moment of truth. Ah! The guy who let me borrow this guitar for this video is probably watching this right now, like, you know, just like, oh no, what's he doing to my guitar? Rob, I am sorry. I'm starting to think that no Les Paul will pass the tuning test. Let's see. On, on to level four. This is level four. The only thing that made this guitar level four and the other Epiphone level three, there's a few things. There is the price point, right? This comes in a little bit higher than that one. I forget what the price is for this one, but I will leave the link to all these guitars from Sweetwater down below. And if you buy them from there, there is no extra cost to you and it does help support the channel. So check out the link just to find out what the price of this one is, because I forget. But I do know that it's more than the last one. And thank you in advance. Now, there's only a few extra features on this one, but they're worth mentioning. So again, we have an Epiphone Les Paul, but this is now the Epiphone inspired by Gibson line. What makes this visually the Epiphone inspired by Gibson is that we have the headstock that looks noticeably more Gibson, right? Doesn't have the classic Epiphone headstock on it. And this is the modern and what the modern accoutrements are stuff like this. We have, first of all, we have this, this modern cutaway on the heel, which is pretty cool for high fret access. The neck is not super Les Paulish. I have a 60s slim profile Les Paul coming up and this is more of a slim 
of a slim profile neck, but it's actually also asymmetrical. This side of the neck is actually fatter than this side. This side's thinner. So like those elements of, of the modern are pretty cool. This also comes loaded with Grover locking tuners this time, which is hilarious that it only took Gibson lo this long to put locking tuners on something. And also has the coil split on these two, but also has an out of phase switch on uh, the top tone knob. Let's get this one, let's get some sounds, let's see. Again, classic kind of, let's check it out on the guitar cam because I also wanna mention how much I love this paint job because it is a, it's like a sparkle, it's like a blue sparkle. It's not, it is not a Pelham, it is a blue sparkle. And this is actually a Sweetwater exclusive color. You can only get this one from Sweetwater and I'm lucky enough to have one. Oh, after all that, it stayed in tune pretty well, huh? It's a little bit out, but better than the rest so far. On to level five. What I say before, this is level five. This is my Les Paul standard. This is as standard as it gets. This is a tobacco burst Les Paul. This is a 2005, right? So this is a 2005 USA made classic Gibson Les Paul standard, tobacco burst. You feel like Slash when you play this thing. And a couple of the fun features about this specific year of them. Now, this is not the same for all Les Paul standards. This is just my Les Paul standard. And I think everyone kind of looks at a Les Paul standard at some point and says like, damn, that is a, that's a classy bitch of a guitar, right? But some of the things that are cool about this one are things like this, for example. This one has nickel hardware. It actually tarnishes kind of like an old classic Les Paul wood, which is pretty cool. This one has, besides the flame over here that's nice and the nickel hardware, the way it tarnishes, and the kind of cream binding that is just so sexy, this one has slightly greened fret markers. So the trapezoids, the pearl is aged slightly to look green, as well as the tuning pegs. The tuning pegs are made to look slightly green as well to give it a little bit more of a classic kind of feel, which is cool. Always fight with selling this, and I've sold it once before and bought it back. This also has, this one specifically, typically they come with the 50s neck, which is a baseball bat, is a chunky neck. This one was my shredder guitar when I was younger because I was like, oh, it's a Les Paul with a slim neck. And I mean, like, it's not really that slim, but it's the slim profile neck from the 60s, which is definitely thinner. If you play Les Pauls, this is definitely thinner than any Les Paul you've ever played before. It's pretty heavy, it's not super heavy, maybe like eight pounds or so, but it is definitely bottom heavy. It falls off me immediately, it's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're also kind of getting away from the range of Les Pauls where they're like, you know, trying to be a workhorse and do everything. Now we're in the range of Les Pauls where it's like, you got a Les Paul really, like it does three things perfectly. That's what like a classic Gibson Les Paul is. It does three sounds, but those three sounds are the best sounds ever. So let's, let's see. I love that bite of the classic just. Oh, it's so good. That's like what it was like. That was the peak of distortion at that time, right? And then when you kick it up and you do this, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm even gonna bring it down, hold on, just so you can hear it, just because when you do this. Oh, it does, it's exactly what you wanna hear, right? Right, check it out, right? And there we are. With the proper love and care, any Les Paul can stay in tune. You just need to keep up on them. And, and I gotta tell you, this one kinda sits here, doesn't get played as much. I clean it up, I set it up, but it doesn't get played as much. So that's kinda what's gonna happen, right? You kinda have to be prepared for the typical Gibson three and three tuning stability, which is, in my opinion, not always that great. But, yep. <laughs> I think you get the general idea. Now, I had a really hard time with this next one, okay? The next level, I didn't want to put where it was, so I'm not considering the next one level six as much as I'm considering level five and level six kind of a tie, and I'll show you why, okay? Check this out. I've done this before on the channel, and I'm gonna do it again. I'd like to dare you right now to tell me which one of these Les Pauls was just the one you saw. Which one was my standard? I'll wait. I'm actually forgetting by looking at just the screen right now, so I'm gonna have to look. Um, if you said it's this one, you would have been correct that this is the Les Paul standard that I just showed you. But look at this phenomenal woodwork on this guitar. And this one, level six, is not in fact a Gibson, but it is my beloved Tokai Love Rock. Not in fact a Les Paul at all, but my beloved gold top fake Japanese made Les Paul that I uh, just like, I can't, like look at it. You're looking at it right now and it just, it feels, when you see it, something about the Gibson gold top. Again, just like that purple I mentioned before, just like that wine red, Gibson does gold tops better than anyone else. There's not a single gold top that, that can stand up to it. And this fake gold top makes me feel in my heart right here like it's a real gold top. I played this when I would travel around in a 70s, 80s tribute band. And for the 70s portion of the show, I would play this and not a single person would ever know. Tokai is the Japanese made Tokai specifically is unbelievable. You could check out my video, my full review about this. It's one of the oldest videos on my channel. But long story short, I traded a motorcycle and the guy needed extra money and he wanted to sell this guitar to get the extra money for the motorcycle. And I was like, wait a second, you have a guitar, what is it? And I've always wanted a gold top. And then he explained what it was and then I felt it. And it's just unbelievable how good this feels as a Les Paul lover. And the cool thing is, I mean like, 
from a distance, you would have no idea. Cause like that, the way they spelt Love Rock to look like it says Les Paul, they did such a good job. Everything about this is right. This has the little position markers around the knobs. It's got, now keep in mind, the guy before me added this pickup of the mini humbucker and the Bigsby. So it really doesn't work the best. He was just a big fan of Neil Young. There's a couple things that I kind of need to do to it to get it to work better, but I just don't touch it. I just never touch it. I don't care. I just never touch it. Just like the chips in before, the Chinese made one. I believe everyone should have a Japanese, really specifically a, a Tokai, just like the, the chips in before. I think that everyone should have a Japanese fake in their guitar signal. I love this. This is actually a Lawler, a mini humbucker, a Lawler mini humbucker. <laughs> It, I played this guitar everywhere and I loved it. And it's got like the round Les Paul neck. It's got everything. It really does. The woodwork is phenomenal. Everything about it's great. I don't love the mini humbucker, but it does the sound that I'm looking for. But I don't love it all around, right? And then we got the rhythm here. Which, I mean, it's a P90 in a gold top. What? what? You can't hate it. The one problem is... It's already out of tune. That is one of the problems. But the other problem is this. I hate regular single coils. It bugs me a little bit. At the time on my pedal board, this guitar was the only guitar that I would travel with that needed me to have a noise suppressor on like a noise gate on my pedal board. And I did just because I loved having this guitar as part of the show. It really just fit the show so well. Check it out on the guitar cam. <laughs> All in all, this is a really fun guitar and it does feel, like it gives me the feeling of a Les Paul that I want. It doesn't just look or sound like a Les Paul, it really truly gives me like the heart and soul feel of a Les Paul. And that's what is so astonishing to me about this guitar. Yeah, I love having this in the guitar signal. It's wonderful. Last but not least, if you have not subscribed yet, please do check the links below. Level seven is coming up right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you level seven with a weight of 12 and a half mahogany pounds and a build height of $6,000. That is not what was originally paid for this guitar, but it's what they go for right now. This is my beloved Les Paul Custom that traveled with me everywhere, played every show for so long. This is one of the guitars, this is, no matter how expensive this guitar gets, this is on the never sell list. This is not going anywhere. If you have one of these, you understand what I'm saying. And now I will tell you, <laughs> The strings are a little bit old. Last time I set this guitar up, I set it up for very low action. It, I, I wanted to be able to shred on it. It's low, so certain sounds may be a little bit grittier than you're used to. But it's still got that Les Paul bite. It's got that, when you hit that D chord is where it really shows, right? Oh, I love this thing. Check it out over on the guitar cam really quick. Oh, the creamy middle position. Of course, the even warmer rhythm position.
so big, much wow, so fat sounding, right? Like I said, this is one giant piece of mahogany. Well, it's probably multiple pieces of mahogany. It is actually one of the last ones before. It's weight relieved, but not chambered. I think that's how this one goes specifically. This is a 2005 and now, it, it's got everything that you could want in a Les Paul Custom, right? You know, it's got the gold, it's got the black, it's got the triple binding, it's got the big block inlays, which are ridiculous. Grover tuners on this one, right? So you know that's quality right there. And yeah, it's just an awesome piece to have. It's so good. It really is. <laughs> It's ha it has so much character now throughout the years of me having it. It's starting to turn yellow around the binding, which that's like a sign of royalty when you have a Les Paul. It's one thing like some of the other ones that you saw that have the binding, it comes yellow to like kind of give it a vintage feel. But when you make your binding on your Les Paul yellow yourself from just playing it and bringing it out, then that's something special. Also, you'll notice that this one kinda has had a little bit, has had some rough times. Like on the back, check it out. You'll see all the buckle rash and everything. There you can see it right there. Oh, I don't mind. I play the crap out of this guitar. I don't know if you've ever seen Pete Steinkoff from The Bouncing Souls. His Les Paul Custom, he's got a 70s Les Paul Custom that is just beat to absolute hell. And I used to take care of this thing, like I was so nervous to let anyone even breathe on it, which I still am kind of that way. But there was a point where I was like, I have to play this thing. I have to play it out. I have to bring it with me. It's gonna get nicked up a little bit. That's part of it. It's gone on the road with me and I absolutely love it. I wanna convert certain things back to standard. Like for example, I put this nameplate on when I was in like, when I was in high school and it says my girlfriend at the time's name on it, which is really ridiculous. And so I wanna convert that back to, you know, I wanna convert that back. The other thing that people ask me about all the time is the knobs. And I just literally was, the reason I have the two gold knobs was because while I was on the road at one point, those knobs broke off when I was on the road one time and I had to replace the pots underneath. And then I only had these gold, you know, these gold knobs to replace it with. So that's just kind of what ended up happening. I would really like to kind of convert this back to the way it's supposed to be though. And something about owning one of these, it's got the big fat 50s neck on it. And I, something about, I know I've shown it already, but like something about the custom shop logo on the headstock just makes us all so happy for some reason. Like, what is it? And just, it just, it's a symbol of authority and of prestige. Like, ah, geez, I wanted to get that logo. I wanted to get the custom logo tattooed on me at one point. It, it's just so freaking cool. And you know, the gold's tarnishing and everything, but you know, it's a guitar and it's meant to be played a little bit. And again, I'm never selling it, so it's mine. I can do whatever I want. Let's, let's kick it up a notch. Let's get something a little bit more. Uh... <laughs> The tuning stability is holding on for like dear life right now, right? Yeah, I think the moral of the story is that no less Paul like no less Paul stays in tune. It's it's just such a bad, I don't know, it's just such a bad thing about Les Pauls is that they're notoriously, you know, the anything that has the three and three headstock from Gibson, like notoriously does not stay in tune. I don't know what it is. There's all sorts of devices that can help you fix that and also just staying on top of it. But man, I something about this guitar, when you pick it up, you just feel mean as hell, man. It's,
You know what else is pretty cool? Check this out. Ready? Check this out. Ready? I'm instantly in Tool, right? It's just unbelievable. And like, maybe in Black Label Society, right? I mean, that's why Adam Jones from Tool plays one of these, right? Like, as soon as you drop D this sucker and put it and just start doing one of those. I'm gonna do my best tool impersonation, ready? <laughs> it's so good. They are the chunkiest sounding guitar in the world. They're wonderful. I can't say enough good things about this. If you're lucky enough to have one of these, then you're lucky enough. There's something great about every level of Les Paul here, all the way from the beginner stage, all the way up to this and the feeling that an instrument like this gives you. They're all special for their own reasons. And remember that whatever level of these Les Pauls you are currently at, that's the best level to be at right now, is whatever level you are at. And I hope you can get through every level of these Les Pauls one day. Remember that, I will tell you though, as much fun as this thing is, and as chunky as it sounds, remember that no matter what level guitar you're at, no matter what level Les Paul you're at, whatever you own, that level is the best level for you. The extra money spent on this versus the first one you saw doesn't make better music than the other. Is it fun to own something like this? Yes. Is it prestigious? Yeah, sure. Is it expensive? Is it luxurious? Yeah, sure. But just remember that no matter what level of Les Paul you own, that's the best level. I've met plenty of people that can make way better music than me on the $150 guitar than I can on this. So just keep practicing and making great music because that's all that matters.